Good morning from Hong Kong. This is Alan from Road Track Club of Central. Today is the second day of Interrota 2020 Hong Kong. It will be a day with lots of excitement and exchange of ideas. First of all, let me give you an overview of today's program. In the next few hours, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Hong Kong time, we are going to have the Rotary Opens Opportunities Forum, consisting of two sections about the future. With part one, future of Rotaract, and part two, let's be future ready. Later today, at 6 p.m. Hong Kong time, you may attend one of the two cultural workshops. Then, in the evening, Interrota Academy, What the World Should Be, will take place at 9 p.m. Hong Kong time. Here comes the first program of the day. Let us kick off the Rotary Opens Opportunities Forum. If you recall, the film of this Interrota is Leverage Youth Power, Level Up the World. We believe by uniting Rotary actors and gathering youth power together, we learn, we serve, and we lead. We can make the world a better place. Level up ourselves and then level up the world. With that in mind, we know Rotary has been opening many opportunities for us. The 2019 Council on Legislation amended the constitutional do documents of Rotary International to elevate Rotaract as a membership type alongside Rotary clubs. Since then, Rotaract policies have been, have been updated to create an inclusive, innovative, and flexible membership experience. How do these changes open opportunities for Rotaractors and shape the future of Rotaract? This is definitely an important topic for Rotaract. And that's why the first part of the forum is about the future of Rotaract. We are very fortunate to have PB Stephen Ho of Rotaract Club of Victoria, past vice chair of Asia Pacific Rotaract MDIO, to be the moderator of this section. I know PB Stephen is going to discuss various topics relating to the future of Rotaract with Rotaract leaders from multi-district information organization, also known as MDIOs, around the world. Now, let me hand over the time to PB Stephen. Thank you, Alan. Um, thanks for having me. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. Uh, welcome to the first part that we talk about the future of Rotaract. I hope you enjoyed um, the day one's program. It's very exciting. And for today and for this session, we're going to introduce some very important objectives um, to you. And we hope you can know more about the similarities and differences between districts and regions, provide insights into topics that relate to the future of Rotaract, and we have the opportunity to unite Rotaractors from around the world. So um, as we joined our, uh, our district, 3450, we just joined the newly formed Asia Pacific Road Track MDIO. I've also invited DRR Ellen yeah. to join us and hope we can get some tips from our panelists from around the world. So let, welcome DRR. Thank you, Stephen. So let me introduce to you our panelists of today. We have five panelists. To start with, it's Joey, the General Secretary of Big West Road Track. Thank you for joining us, Joey. Next, we'll have Louis, who is the chair of the Filipinas uh, Road Track MDIO and also the incoming chair of the Asia Pacific Road Track MDIO. Thank you, Louis. Hello. Hello. Next, we have Mafalda, who's the president of ERIC MDIO. ERIC stands for European Road Track Information Center. Hello, Mafalda. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Um, next, we have Samantha, who is the chairperson of Road Track Asia Australia MDIO. Hello. Hello. And then last but not never the least, we have Yatin, who is the president of Rotaract South Asia MDIO. Hi, everyone. Hello. So um, to all the audience who are listening or joining us today, uh, please be reminded that we have um, a question and answer session that will come throughout the session as well as at the last part of the session. So if you have questions, you could leave your questions at the chat box for the Zoom participants. And for those who are joining YouTube or Facebook, you could fill in the Google form. So without further ado, let's start with the first session. Let us uh, know more about all of our panelists, um, that they could introduce themselves and uh, maybe tell us why they joined Rotaract. Maybe that could happen like a decade ago for myself, uh, a few years for you maybe. Um, so let's start with Joey. Joey, how are you today? Well, thanks. Thanks for having me. So yeah, my name is Joey Bison. I'm from the Rotaract Club of Victoria in British Columbia, Canada. 
I joined Rotaract uh, several years ago to um, mostly to make a difference in my community, but uh, today I'm here representing Big West Rotaract, uh, which covers 26 districts across uh, Canada and the U.S. on the West Coast. Thank you, Joey. Um, oh, seems like we have the same club name. I'm also from Rotaract Club yeah. of Victoria. Just that we, um, my club, we are in Hong Kong, and your club is in Canada. Yes, there you go. Yep, there we are. We're connected. So next, uh, we have Louis. Hello, Louis. How are you today? I am feeling good. So I'm actually a Rotaractor from the Philippines. I joined. I joined Rotaract 10 years ago uh, because I also want to make a difference in my community. But then through the years, I realized that Rotaract is more than just that. Uh, we actually learn from each other. We also have opportunities to uh, develop our skills. And right now, I'm leading uh, the Filipinas Rotaract MDIO, which is, which is composed of 10 districts in the Philippines of almost uh, 700 Rotaract clubs and 14,000 Rotaractors. And I'm very happy with the experience that I had and hope to, more, hope to have more exciting uh, opportunities as I take the leadership of the Asia Pacific Rotaract MDIO next. Thank you. I hope today is also a very exciting moment for you as well. So next we have Mafalda um, from Eric. I think Eric is probably the first uh, MDIO in Rotary. Uh, yes, we like to, uh, <laughs> to, to mention that. Um, we were created in 93 officially, but we are here strong since 88. Um, my, my, my name is Mafalda. I am from Portugal and my club is Rotaract Club do Divelas in Lisbon. Uh, I joined Rotaract, I, I don't know, six, seven years ago. Let's not and mention Rotaract that. Rotaract <laughs> Europe five years ago. Uh, as I mentioned, we are quite old. Uh, right now, Eric has 116 districts and we are still growing. Uh, we are holding 24,000 24, Rotaractors at the moment, more or less. And it's been a very delightful uh, trip so far so <laughs> great so we have next we have Samantha from Australia hi or oh, good day good from day. Australia um, I'm Samantha and um, I'm from Western Australia and my Rotaract club is the provisional club of Melville City um, I joined Rotaract about seven years ago after having an amazing experience in other Rotary youth programs uh, that I did in high school uh, then once I finished university, I heard about these programs again and yeah, someone that I met there that I knew from my time in high school said that I should check out Rotaract. I went along to my first meeting and I could just feel in my heart that it was about something bigger and that I could make a difference. So um, I have been there ever since and I have loved the opportunity to, to kind of play my small part and use my strengths to be a part of something bigger to actually make change that I wouldn't be able to do myself. And I've met some wonderful people along the way, which which is why I've stayed. And I'm here today as the, I guess, representing Rotaract Australia. We currently have 19 districts and about 1,000 members. Um, and yeah, very excited to be here as part of this panel today. Great. Thank you, Samantha. Um, let's hear from Yatin. Hi, good morning and greetings from India and I am here for the event Inter Rota. It's an exciting news for the entire Rotaract fraternity in South Asia. About me, I joined Rotaract in 2012 and it has been a long journey since then. And finally stepping into the Rotaract MDIO's president role gives me an opportunity wherein I can stand by the words that be a gift to the world. And that's how we here in South Asia are celebrating the Rotaract essence together. We come here as a group of 41 districts representing more than one lakh Rotaractors and we look forward to the event today. Good luck guys. Thank you Yatin. So Alan, have you discovered that we have connected the world? We have so many experienced Rotaract and um, leaders who are holding very important positions in their district and as well as the MDIO. So their experience are very important to us and I think um, it is great that we could have them and they could share what they have gone through um, in, the, in the next in a, next hour, I suppose. Um, so 
I, I'm not sure if you've noticed is that we have MDIOs that are formed in different ways. Mm. So you could see uh, maybe for Samantha, she is the MDIO for the whole country. Mm -hmm. And then we have, as well as um, Louis for the Philippines as well. But then there is Mafalda who is um, holding the, who is holding mm. Eric, um, that is across countries. Mm. And then for Joey, he's in Big West Road Track. That's part of a country. So it's a very imp uh, interesting um, composition. So what do you think about it? Well, I think that's really interesting. I mean, um, I'm very excited to learn more about, you know, that how different MDIOs work. I believe there will be similarities and also differences, um, especially for District 3450. We have just joined, you know, the newly chartered Asia Pacific Road Trail MDIO. I'm very excited to learn more from these guys. Yep. So as you can see, um, I think with people's different experiences, um, although they have, um, for an MDIO to be formed, you need to do some training for people, uh, for, for your districts, um, and then you might need to have um, administrative um, trainings to support them, and um, many, many more. And depends on, on the culture and the need for your districts, the MDIOs, they would have different functions as well. So maybe let's hear from them. Um, does anyone who want to share about um, what are the strengths and weaknesses that, that you find um, in your position and how maybe you could um, learn from other MDIOs that they could share their experience with you? Anyone? Don't be shy. I can start. Yeah, thank you. So, as you were mentioning, Eric is this MDIO that is on the whole continent. So we are sharing a lot of different cultural background, history, um, language. That is a big factor, actually. And we use English as common uh, as working language for our meetings. So our biggest point, and I think our biggest advantage, is the fact that we can connect all of these cultures in when we meet in person, uh, in offline, in online, and we can share these values and find different ways of solving problems. Because most of the times, clubs are having the same problems that can be solved in different ways. So this is a big plus when you have so many cultures and so many clubs meeting at the same time. Also, at a disadvantage is the fact that we have so many members and so many cultures and so many languages that sometimes it's hard to coordinate everything at the same time, so many time zones. So I would say these are our, our big points and, and lows, but not lows, but yeah, we got. So speaking of time zones, I think Samantha, you have also the same problem as well. Um, I, I guess our, our problem with time zones is that our time zone is very different from most other parts of the world. So when we try to connect with um, our international friends, most often it's a very, very challenging time zone for us. Although I have to say this event is the same time zone for me <laughs> in Western Australia. So, so exciting. Um, I do think a strength of, our, of ours here in Australia um, is that we, we really do provide great support to those people that step up into leadership positions in Rotaract. Uh, but I think a weakness of ours is really that we don't have a lot of new people stepping up into mm. leadership positions. Mm. So um, showing them the amazing value and how rewarding it is to take on a position like chairperson, like district representative and like president, I think is something that we are very actively working on. Um, but yeah, it's, it's wonderful to hear Mafalda's uh, strengths as well from a very, very different MDIO to ours. I think, Joey, you've been nodding your head and you've been, <laughs> do you agree very much with what Samantha mentions? Yeah, it's, it's interesting, you know, you were talking earlier about uh, just how each MDIO is, can be so different. And for us, like we, um, I'd say one of our strengths is we, our MDIO mirrors pretty well our uh, rotary zone so we work a lot with uh, our rotary partners and in particular you know, the director that sits on the ri board um, and you know all of the districts uh, within so that's uh, pretty useful but uh, on the same hand you know maybe a, a challenge for us is it's a large geographic area and it can be difficult to do projects and um, that sort of thing that involve that in-person stuff of course a lot 
over the last while has been easier with, with Zoom, of course. Yep. Can you elaborate a bit more about how you mirror with um, your zone in, um, with the Rotary International? Sure. So our MDIO, uh, any districts in the west coast of North America are welcome to join. However, um, we specifically target uh, working with zones 26 and 27. And those, the zones have changed a little bit over time, too. So the districts that have been part of our MDIO uh, have, have increased over time, which is really, really nice. Um, but by working with them, we can kind of ensure that we meet all the character or um, meet the, the needs of working with our Rotary partners. Um, we can build really good connections with all of the district governors and the directors and have uh, lots of representation uh, within the Rotary kind of establishment for our area. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe um, the setup or the coordination with the Rotary um, district or even with zones could be a very important part or something that other MDIOs could also, maybe it's a takeaway point for them mm -hmm. as well. So um, how about Louis? How, how do you find, because yeah, uh, you're, you're having two positions. Um, one is the current one and the incoming one. Yeah, it's actually challenging. I don't know if I will be the first MDIO a chair of two MDIOs <laughs> in the future. But anyway, I would like to add on uh, Jovi. Uh, I believe it's really very helpful if the MDIO mirrors the same setup of the zone. For the Philippines, we're part of Zone 10A. So it's also the 10 districts in the Philippines. So in terms of collaboration uh, with Rotary, it's very easy for us. Actually, uh, through the years, we have done a lot of collaborations with our Rotary, like the, right now in the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we did the Philippine Rotary vaccination campaign, wherein we help educate the public, uh, the Filipino people, about the importance of uh, vaccination. And then just recently, we launched the Philippine Rotaract magazine in partnership with the Philippine Rotary magazine. And a lot more. I'm actually an advocate of Rotary and Rotaract collaboration. And later in the discussion, I think it would play a very important role in advancing Elevate Rotaract. And MDIOs really play a very big role in bridging the Rotaractors in their region with their Rotarians because mostly MDIOs coordinate with the top Rotary leaders in their region. Yeah, Louis, actually I saw from your Facebook and your MDIO Facebook recently about your first, you know, um, Road Track Philippines magazine. That's really cool. And on, on that, actually, would you like to share a bit more about the Rotary Road Track collaboration? Yeah, definitely. So in all of the trainings that we do in the MDIO, we always uh, invite our zone leaders. Whenever we have programs, let's say for the Rotary Foundation, and we wanted our Rotaractors to know more about global grants or to support the Enfolio campaign, we always uh, coordinate with our Enfolio uh, zone coordinator so that we can make sure that we support the initiatives of the zone. And at the same time, uh, the Rotarians can also support our own ideas and initiatives. So in all of these undertakings in the zone, we always make sure that MDIO is in the loop. So eventually, our Rotarians and our district governors always looks for the Rotaractors in the discussion table. I see. And with that, you aim to hashtag transform Philippines Rotaract, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Louis is actually our social media expert. You know? Yeah, the KOL, right? Yeah, exa exactly. I think a lot of road track leaders are actually make good use of the social media to yeah. spread the, the words of, uh, about road track as well. How about Yatin? How do you work in the South Asia side, especially in India? Uh, so it's like uh, we focus on the strength that we have is the geographical as well as the cultural diversity we have over here. There are different languages and uh, spread over five zones of Rotary. We do keep in touch with the Rotary personals uh, coming in and displaying a good way of uh, balancing between Rotary and Rotary. And especially at the events that we have, uh, all the multi district events we have, we ensure that we have the representation from the RI directors that we have from here and also the RI presidents uh, if they are available and the event has that magnitude. And uh, talking about, yes, uh, it's very true that all the MDR leaders have to be up to the mark when it comes to social media, given that awareness is uh, one important key. 
when it comes to spreading and uh, the multi-district information organization, as it says, the information has to be spread. And especially in the COVID times, you see uh, these are the tools which have really helped us and keep the districts connected. And over here in South Asia, if you believe when we have countries, uh, multiple countries, it's districts from Pakistan, we have districts from India and Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bhutan, Maldives. So all of them, uh, there's just one thing. You now we have multiple languages over here. So it's very tough for all of us to connect to individually with the DRRs. But at the same time, we do, do ensure the zonal directors, the zonal representatives do come into the role as they are much versed with the, uh, their own areas. And that's where we excel and we are also looking forward to structurize the entire community the entire road track fraternity over here by strengthening the bylaws from the club level so that's what i personally believe we are working upon and that's something for the next four years we have to uh, get it sorted okay so you have some challenges and you want to overcome them so i think for for the audience i think they're more interested in listening to you about what are the challenges to be hosting and holding a very important position in the MDIO. So I think we know all about the, the strengths that you have, cultural diversity, and um, you have a lot of talent, and um, you have coordination with Rotary. Mm -hmm. But then, what is the challenge that you've been facing, other than time zone? I know we've heard about that. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, can I answer first? Yes, uh, sure. I think the very challenging role for MDA officers is the extent, the number that we have to cater in terms of our services. Uh, as we have seen, uh, we have discussed, we are handling thousands of rotor actors. Even though we deal with the districts, uh, at the end of the day, our services should be felt by the individual rotor actors. And that's where the MDIO actually uh, comes from. And Alan mentioned earlier about Transform Filipinas Rotaract. And as you can see, Philippines is an archipelago. And it's very hard to coordinate or even talk to a single Rotaract. So what we did, we digitized all our processes. Uh, we ventured into website, uh, social media, even the way we administer our planning. So everything, as, uh, if we can digitize that and make it easy, even e-learning, uh, one of the major functions of MDIOs are training uh, the leaders and the rotor actors. And it's very difficult if we do multiple trainings time and time because that would eat up a lot of our term. So that's why we also ventured into e-learning. Okay. So anyone wants to add on anything about your challenges? Yes, Yatin. Uh, so you see, I'll put in a very practical example over here. The Road Track logo over the time, it's changed. Uh, like we don't use the Rotary uh, Club partner anymore in the Road Track logo. Now, while uh, this was something which was well communicated to all the district leaders, uh, but when you see, and Mahalda can of course, you know, relate to this, having a depth of DRRs whom you have to communicate this to and ensure that all the DRRs are passing that information to the clubs and the clubs are making their retractors aware. Now, it goes down well if you have a limited number of uh, districts to look after and a limited count of retractors. But when it comes down to a larger audience uh, like we have in South Asia, like we have in Europe, there it does feel like a challenge because in the years, uh, in the current days as well, whenever I see any club hosting an event and using the old logo, it really, you know, uh, gives us a strong challenge that yes, the communication channel has still to be made more stronger to ensure that yes, we are passing on all the details and especially after elevator road track coming in, a lot of new things coming in, all that information does flow down to every road tractor, every single person who is associated with road track. So I agree with Louis that we need to digitalize it and ensure that the communication channel is uh, very transparent. I'm sure you all, yes. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I actually agree with you, yeah, with the logo. That's <laughs> the same problem that they've encountered in our country. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you all have been trying your best. It's just that sometimes, you know, these just happen. <laughs> it just takes time, you know, and communications. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, just going back to the topic that we are talking about, the future of Rotaract. But before that, we will first talk about the reason road track changes and to talk about that we have a very important guest joining us mm -hmm. who is our right president i saw him on the zoom chat yay so we have our president hoga 
thank you for joining us today. I hope the time is、um, not too unfriendly for you. <laughs> yeah, so you know what? It's、uh, already light、uh, here outside. It's very early in Germany. It's four thirty, or but yes, no, four thirty-five. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay、uh, because I would love to be with you in person, of course, as what was planned already last year. Yes,、uh, but it's it's okay. I like it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Luckily, it's only three years,、uh, three, three, once in every three years. <laughs>、um, so、um, I believe the Rotary International Board and trustees of the foundation have been listening to different comments after the release of some policies. Some may be deployed. Some are still planning to be launched.、Um, so maybe some Rotractors they have some doubts or questions in mind, but they're maybe too shy or they don't have the right channel to ask. So today is.、Uh, Perfect occasion, perfect really. Occasion, the perfect chance that we have our president here with us. So、um, I think the policies that we're talking about is、um, Alan. You mentioned in the、um, introdu- introduction、mm-hmm. that the uplifting of the age limit, elevating the Rotary Club, Rotary Club status, and as well as implementing some RI dues. So these three are the very important three、um, policy changes for Rotary, the whole Rotary community.、Mm-hmm. So.、Um, Maybe if、um, our president Hoga, you want to give us some introduction to that, and then、um, the panelists they could、uh, bring up their questions or the challenges that they've been facing. Yes, first of all, the idea, the the whole idea was born in the、uh, so-called Young Leaders Committee. I I had the the honor to chair this、uh, committee. It started in two thousand thirteen for yeah four years. And the the idea was born here in this committee, because you know, Rotary was before that just a, a program of Rotary, nothing else. The status of a Rotary actor was at that time the same than a one weekend Rotary participant, just a youth program alumni, nothing else. And I thought, and we all thought, that's totally wrong because Rotary is like Rotary. And a Rotary Club is、uh, like a Rotary Club. And by the way, a good Rotary Club is like a good Rotary Club. And a not as good Rotary Club is like a not as good Rotary Club. <laughs> We all know that. So, and that was the idea. This simply the idea: a Rotary Club is like a Rotary Club. And that was the idea to make Rotary part of the organization.、Uh, and it took some years. And you all know, at the last Council on Legislation. By the way, I was an ordinary representative on the floor, uh, uh, so we failed with this enactment, and、uh, so so we made a lot of lobby work during the evening and the night with all the other participants, and the next day it went through, and so I think so, and now this was, and nobody knows what to do right now, because normally in Rotary, we are preparing things with a pilot five six. Seven years in advance, and then it comes、uh, to a decision. Right now, everything was vice versa. It was it, it, this is a totally change in Rotary at all. So we started with the decision because everybody thought this is the right decision, and after that, we have to or, or we thought and we still think about how to do it in the best way.、Uh, and I really like this idea, having a good idea, doing it immediately, and then think about. How to use it in the best way, and how to how to make this change in the best way, and that's at least what has happened. What happens with the Elevate、uh, Rotary Committee, and what is happening still with the、uh, Shaping Rotary's, Rotary's Future Committee. And、uh, if someone is、uh, disappointed that the progress is not as fast as in the beginning, I can tell you, it doesn't make any sense to.、Uh, um, Change the structure of the current districts、uh, to put to give Rotary、uh, uh, a, a place here when we are going to change everything. So that's the reason why we are slowing down a little bit because we don't want to change the、uh, we don't want to build Rotary in it. We want to change nearly everything here in this structure and let's take some more time than expected. So just just at the beginning and now.、Uh, 
So the questions, please. Let's chat a little bit <laughs> less other than if I'm talking. I'm anyway talking too much. Thank you. Sure. So uh, we have panelists uh, who is from uh, the Big Bus Wheel Track, from um, the Philippines, uh, from Eric, from Australia, and as well as from South Asia. So I think they have um, gathered a lot of comments from um, their communities. So I think they could share with you on what they've been facing. So any uh, panelists you would like to um, share something with President Hoiga? Yeah, probably I can start. Hi, President Hoiger, Louis from the Philippines. So when the Elevate Rotaract policy changes was uh, enacted, what we did in our MDIO is uh, we conducted a lot of baseline surveys. Uh, we administered a nationwide survey. We want to identify if Rotaractors would be able to pay the dues. Uh, number two, are they uh, very receptive to become Rotarians in the future? And then we uh, established statistics. So we started counting how many of our Rotaractors are joining Rotary. And then uh, how many is the membership growth of Rotaract in the Philippines? And then we actually floated all this data to our Rotarians. And what the, one of the good things that happened is they started to have more attention about us, Rotaractors. They see that, oh, why is a Rotaractor growing much more compared to Rotary in the Philippines? Uh, why are, uh, oh, there are already a lot of Rotaractors becoming Rotarians. Oh, the MDIO is doing a lot of digitization activities. Then they started to reach out to us. And I think that's the very important uh, trigger of the Elevate Rotaract. Um, it opened up the idea to the Rotarians that they need to talk us. They need to acknowledge that Rotaractors are their future potential feeders of members. And we have a lot of ideas to put in the table. And uh, very true enough, our MDIO and even the districts in the Philippines, Philippines benefited a lot because every time there's a Rotary initiative in the zone, they would always want to have a Rotaractor and board. And just recently, I was appointed as Assistant Regional Rotary Coordinator for Rotaract in Zone 10A, so I will help both the Rotary and the Rotaract grow its membership in our country. Um, yes, so, so my thinking about this is here, I see Rotaract since many, many years really as equal uh, of Rotary and Rotaract. It's, uh, for me, it's, a, it's always a question of working on eye level, because what many Rotarians in the world have to learn uh, is that Rotaract, they, they are no kids. They are young professionals, they are students, they are some of them really successful entrepreneurs. I think that was, for me, the major point uh, here. Uh, and I think we are created a lot of awareness simply with these, with these steps where, where Rotary Clubs everywhere learned is to see uh, Rotaract, I think, with, with other eyes. And it takes some time, but I think we are making progress from, from year to year. And that's, I think that's, I'm really happy about. But there's still, still a lot to do here, no doubt. Let's listen to some other um, comments from uh, the regional leaders. Anyone else would like to um, speak up for your opportunities or challenges? Um. Yeah, definitely. Um, so here in Australia, in general, in Rotary and Rotaract, our membership is uh, not growing as fast as we would like it to be. And the Elevate Rotaract changes have, have helped. Um, so in Australia, a lot of our members are on the older side, uh, the early 30s, high 20s, uh, we don't often get a lot of members um, that are 18, 19, 20. Uh, and if we do, their life changes so much in their 20s that they're often not a member when they kind of enter their 30s. So for us, the, the removal of the upper age limit um, has been really helpful. And we have seen a lot of, especially members that have been around for a long time with a lot of experience, they feel okay to stay now, uh, which is helpful so that we can continue um, nurturing and mentoring the younger members. Uh, it's also really helpful because it gives those members that are just that bit older, but maybe still studying, maybe still living at home. It gives them the okay to take that bit longer to find a Rotary Club that fits for them. So for me, um, I actually just joined a Rotary Club uh, like one month ago. Uh, so even though I've known I could be a dual member for many, many years, it's taken me this long to find the club for me, uh, even though I know how valuable it is. So by extending that upper age limit, I know that we will have more dual members 
just because they have that extra time to still hang out with their Rotaract friends while being able to scope out the Rotary Clubs. Um, I think the introduction of dues is it's a bit controversial here at the moment, but I know that it's for the best and it will help us better sell the value that Rotaract Clubs give members. And I think that we're in that thought process at the moment. How can we sell the value? Because it's more the value we get, the value I've got from Rotaract is so much more than a few dollars per year. So how can I sell that to our members? How can I sell that to my friends and my family and anyone else interested? And that's the conversation we're having now. How can we sell that value? Because in the past, we haven't done a good job at that. So even though it's a challenge for us at the moment, it's a really good challenge because if we want to attract new people and in particular people who are not in our immediate network, we need to sell that value. And this has been the trigger, I think, that we need to be able to do that. So all in all, I think it is an absolutely amazing thing. Uh, definitely has its challenges, but they're all good challenges that we would have to face one day or another. So from an Australian perspective, yes, we, we think it's amazing. And we know that the Rotary International team want us to succeed and have our backs. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're excited for the journey to, to see it all happen. Thank you, Samantha. I think what you said, I think that is so important. That's what I'm asking all Rotary Clubs in, in the whole world uh, to make their, their own strategic planning for the next years. And I think the, the most important question is definitely, what is the added value we are bringing to our members and new members? And especially in those parts of the world where Rotary, Rotary and Rotaract have problems to get new members. And I think, of course, that's of course also a result of an aging population in all these countries. Uh, there, there are of, of problems. But I think, for me, it's always every club, club by club, has to find this answer by itself. What is the added value if when I'm looking for new members? What do I sell when I'm marketing? It's, it's, like, it's like marketing. We are marketing the what we are doing is marketing the club experience. So what is, what is the club experience I'm selling to people and tell them, hey, can become a member of, 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 my, of my club? What makes my, my club so unique? So what is, I think this is these questions, and this, is, this, this uh, solutions has to be found really club by club. There's no, there's no global solution. Don't ask the RI president for a solution here. <laughs> I have no idea. But, but what, what changes for me also in, in explaining what Rotary is, so the old version was always Rotary is a service organization and uh, we are doing good in the world. I think that's not enough to explain it. So today, it's, for me today, Rotary is, I think, the ideal platform for service, for connections, for friendship, for personal growth. So for, and regardless, young or old, Rotaract or Rotary. I think I love this platform idea right now. And okay, I, I still love love my theme. Rotary opens opportunities. And by the way, also, <laughs> Rotaract opens opportunities for others. Hey, become a member. So there is something something in for you. I think. Thank you. This is really important. Thank you so much. Hey, Yeti. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, so very good morning, uh, sir, from India. And uh, we recently see uh, a spike in uh, new people, uh, new road track clubs, the self-sponsored clubs that are coming in. Now we, of course, uh, welcome the idea of a dual sponsorship for a club, be it by a road track, be it by a rotary, individually by a road track or a rotary. Sounds good. But uh, what exactly, like, we need to publicize this vision to the entire community here in Rotaract behind the self-sponsored Rotaract clubs. Like, uh, it's like missing a parent figure for them. It might be a senior Rotaract club can charter a new Rotaract club, and that makes sense that, yes, they do have someone to look up to. Or as has been the culture since ages, that Rotary sponsors a new Rotaract club. And, of course, we have the Rotary presidents and the Rotaract advisors. Uh, but... Uh, and that's fine. Uh, so yes, coming to the self-sponsored clubs, you know, what exactly is the vision that has been put behind in getting the self-sponsored clubs as one of the parts of uh, you know new clubs coming in? Who do they look up to? Uh, 
Oops. President Hoga, you're probably on mute. Oh, someone muted everybody, yes. Oops. Okay, thank <laughs> you. I'm audible right now. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Yari, for this for this question because and by the way, what happens right now in Germany that uh, Rotaract Club becomes a sponsor of a new Rotary Club. Mm. So this is, I think this is one step more. Uh, and it's possible. The question behind that, that's very simple. You can do it, you must not do it. That's the same, the same idea behind the, all, the age limit. You can use it, you must not use it. And uh, Joey Basin is with us, and, and Joey, you know, we, we discussed this uh, last year a lot, and uh, uh, the idea behind it is you don't need the board of directors, you don't need Rotary International to tell you what kind of sponsor club you want. You don't need us to tell you when you have to leave your friends in your Rotary club. And that's the idea behind that. This is to be decided by your Rotary club. And by the way, when we are talking about this ideas, what is behind that, uh, also the, the age limits. <laughs> Yesterday, uh, some of the uh, uh, former German Rotary leaders, or he's still a Rotary actor, he was also from the uh, uh, RDK, uh, um, at least he's an, also an MDIO leader. Uh, with his wife, he's married right now, of course, with the with a rotor actor and they are expecting a baby and they visited me and we discussed it the whole afternoon. And it's also about the, the age limits and we, we discussed the, the need of these age limits. And he told me, even if he's still a rotor actor, he's 32 right now, if he, he feels that now if there are younger people are coming up and let's do the younger people the work and it's time for me to leave to leave the club. And I, I love to see at least three age limits in, in Rotary. First of all, the overall limit when people have to leave the club. And this was in Germany already 32 for many, many years. I know that the one of the large, no, definitely the largest Rotary club in the United States, the Rotary club of Birmingham, Alabama, they had their internal age limit of 35. So, you know, at least Rotary follows just what every what anyway happens. I would love to see these def, these total age limit for all members. I would love to see a age limit for new members. Doesn't make any sense to ask someone of 55 to become a member of a, a, a Rotary. So I think these should really young, really young members, new members. And I would love to see an upper age limit also for club officers to make sure that that here young people take the lead in the Red Rock Club. And that's possible. So it's really up to every club to make its own decisions what fits best for the uh, Red Rock Club. So overall idea, you don't need old people uh, from everywhere in the world to tell you uh, what is your need in your uh, Red Rock Club. Thank you. I, I would just add to that, it was uh, very helpful that you did remove the limit because that is what it has done here. It has given us permission to determine our own age limit, which which is not 35, it is younger, uh, but it has just been that, just knowing that Rotary International has given us that permission, that's what's been really valuable, but excellent points there, Holger. Yes, thank you. It's, you know what? Uh, the Board of Directors has to listen what happens in the Rotary Club. And this is the same thing when our with attendance. In, 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 in the past, we had really tough attendance rules. Uh, so we have to be at least 60% of our meetings and all these things. And this never, nobody controlled it, never happened. So I think the board of directors also has simply followed that, what happens on the ground and, and listening and then at least doing what, what, what people want in, in, in our, in, in Rotary and Rotary. Thank you, President Hoka. I, I think we have listened to a um, few representatives from the Asia-Pacific region. Why don't we listen from Joey from Americas and also my father from the Europe? Sure, yeah, thank you so much, and uh, thanks, Holbert, for being here. You know, with uh, all of these policy changes around uh, the uh, Rotaract and the age limit and dues, the important thing to me and 
you know, first of all, recognizing how difficult it is to make these changes in Rotary it takes uh, quite a long time. And then also, um, you know, I've come to learn so much about how Rotaract is different all around the world. And these changes just bring a lot of flexibility, and I think that that is the key thing, uh, particularly for um, my areas here in Canada and the United States. Um, there's a lot of university clubs where the age limit thing isn't really a problem, but then on the uh, community-based club side, uh, like Holger mentioned, uh, although not in my immediate area, uh, the club like in Birmingham, Alabama, already had the age limit uh, beyond 30. And it just allows more time for people to be able to uh, connect with Rotary Clubs or to join a Rotary Club or, or the likes of that. But uh, the main comment that I have just about these policies is I really appreciate the approach that um, the RI board and the RI leaders have taken to make them happen. You know, there was a well-intentioned in the beginning and getting it approved was a little bit difficult. And then, but the board has been really receptive to feedback and along the way, and there have been changes to the original, um, you know, drafts of the policies that allow for clubs to set their own age limits, for instance, rather than just everybody not having an age limit. So I think that that's been been really a, a good process to, you know, be receptive to feedback and make these changes along the way. Yes, Joey, uh, if I can step in, you are you are listening so so board meetings this year and and uh, you sometimes you also see that Rotary is so different everywhere. There is no one Rotary. Rotary is different in Germany. It's totally different in Canada. It's different in India. In the Philippines, Rotary is everywhere different. And if there is a meeting of the board of directors, you can see all the differences. And if we are starting to discuss issues, then some of these issues are not important for probably Europeans, but they are very important for Indians and people from the Philippines. And then, and that sometimes it, it's one of the reasons why the decisions are taking so long. Sometimes we are discussing, sometimes a little bit crazy, Joey, back and forth, back and forth. But this is because all the difference in cultures, in, 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 in the way how Rotary is lived in, in many parts of the world. And so, yeah, that's sometimes the reason why it's, it's, it's slowing down the whole process in Rotary, because, of course, we try to hear everybody's voice and uh, the voice of all regions. Uh, yes, as Holger was mentioning, here in Europe, a lot of changes has also happened. The fact that we now are more flexible regarding the age limit was a big plus. Because, for example, I came from Portugal and our age limit was very strict. It was 30 and we, when we were 30, we needed, it was mandatory for us to leave. Even when we were like the most important, the mo most of the members were already 30, it was mandatory for the members to leave. And now it's more flexible, the club can continue their dynamic and there is an opportunity for the club itself to decide what they want to, to move forward. So it was a very important uh, decision for Rotaractors uh, in Europe uh, to, to have this flexibilization for, for picking who they want to have in their clubs, who they want to have in the board of the clubs as guests and to the new members. And I agree uh, very much with Samantha said at the beginning, it was a very important um, step in the direction to for the collaboration between Rotaract and Rotary. So I think let's go back to, to the, um, the topic that we're talking about, the future. So for President Heuger, what do you foresee um, in maybe in five years' time, how would Rotary and Rotaract look like? Uh, I would I was so happy if I, <laughs> if I could, could, could see that. No, but I, but I, think, I think change, I'm always talking about change. And it's, 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 it's sometimes hard in, in Rotary because, as I said, Rotary is really one of the slowest organizations in the world. And, that's because we really try to, to listen to everybody and because we are all cultures, all regions are in Rotary. By the way, when I'm talking about service projects and I'm always saying, you know, Rotary is not going anywhere because Rotary is everywhere. And that makes it sometimes, sometimes difficult. 
I really would love to see, and what is so important, and that's why I'm always counting on Rotaract. Um, my major problem is if I think about North America, South America, Europe, Australia, in these aging societies, that Rotary is aging too fast. Giving you an example, in my country, Germany, the average age of a Rotary, of a Rotary Club is about uh, 65. That's pretty much old already. In the United Kingdom, I don't know, someone from England here or uh, from, from the United Kingdom, the average age is 75. Mm. Imagine, average age of a Rotary Club, 75. And I'm asking you, how can a Rotary Club with this average age still being attractive for a road riding. Ever in average 75. That's that's uh, really a lot. I love my old rotary friends, no doubt. And we have to do something against that. And that's why I'm always asking road riders, if there is no rotary club in your area, what fits to you fits to your needs. Please, please, I'm really urging everybody, find your own Rotary Club model. Simply, simply start to create a new Rotary Club because that's, that's so important. I think the world really needs Rotary Club. Porque te, ah, no, está horrible, guacala, quítamelo. The idea is, Miren, is so ustedes están viendo esto? So, so unique of, of Rotary and so, so, with so much value and, and I really, so my fear is that in parts of the world, Rotary becomes to be no longer relevant. Rotary is relevant in many parts. But so that's, that's, and that's why I'm always put so much pressure on new clubs, put so much pressure on looking for younger members. Sometimes I'm, that's the reason why I'm urging road records. Hey, this idea is great and we have so many friends here everywhere in the world. Like, like this, this picture, but I can see it here on the screen. And that's why I'm asking and urging everybody, hey, let's do something against that. Let's make sure that Rotary is, and Rotary are growing in every part of the world. Not just the successful parts are East Asia and Southeast Asia, uh, Mira, India. No estoy a favor de so, que so, so successful right now. Africa yeah. is successful, but it's possible everywhere. So one of my greatest values is wherever you go, in the world, really wherever you go, virtual right now or also traveling, going to Rotaract or Rotary, you will find always great people, unbelievable great people. You can count on them. You can do something with them. And, uh, and I think, so that's the reason why if I'm talking about the future, when I think, yes, we all can, can work hard on that to make this 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 experience also possible for the people coming coming after us and that's as far in Rotary but also in World Rap. So yes, I, I think we have a great future, but like always, like in all companies or families, you have simply to work for a for a great future. I think um we don't need five years to see um, changes because we see um, Jennifer E. Jones will be becoming the our president in 2022 and 23, the first um, woman to host this position in over 100 years of um, history in Rotary. And I think as um, our President Holger, you mentioned the um, why Rotary is being the slowest organization over the world. I think it's the reason is that we embrace the diversity and the differences that um, everyone holds around the world. So that's why that makes us um, so slow, because we care about everyone's idea and opinion. So um, how, how do our panelists, um, how do you feel about these changes? Um, will you be um, joining us uh, or sharing your dream about what could happen in these five years? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a personal advocate of Rotary and Rotary collaboration. So if I will imagine a future, I will still imagine a future 
wherein uh, all generations, because I think that's the big, biggest potential of Rotary that makes us unique among other organizations. We cater to multiple generations. We have Interact, we have Rotary, and then we have Rotary. So it means a lot, but we can uh, maximize the strengths, the skills, the ideas of different generations. And if we can work as one, um, all, uh, all, all of these diversities are in the discussion table, then I think uh, we could further propel our organization to grow. And not uh, certain, uh, certain generations just uh, taking the leadership and the decision-making role. Well, for me, I think in five years, I hope that uh, we are not celebrating that we have for the first time a president as a woman, but that is a current situation that all countries that already accept that as a fact, all clubs. Um, for example, we had this group of MDIO leaders, and actually, I think Samantha, correct me if I'm wrong, we were more women this year than, than men. So this is a big uh, thing that uh, in Rotterdam, for example, there are a lot of leadership uh, with women and, and that, that's something that uh, marks the fact that things are changing. Uh, Rotary may be slow, but we are part of the movement and we are on the movement and we are changing with the movement. So things are progressive, progressing and I hope and I believe in five years this will be a reality for for everything and for all of the clubs. And I'll just add to what Mafalda said, here in Australia, I think we actually have more female rotor actors than male rotor actors and in our MGIO we have definitely more female uh, executive directors than male and our, we've had I think a few female leaders in a row and then our next two chair people will be females as well. So we are quite female heavy uh, here in Australia. And I guess from a Rotaract perspective, the value of that is when I joined Rotaract, I didn't know that women were once not able to join Rotary. I didn't know that we hadn't had a female president and that never impacted my journey because I always, what I could see around me in Rotaract reflected the world. There was some men, there was some women, um, and so that was a wonderful experience for me and for a lot of other Rotor Actors here. And I think the biggest change we will see by having Jennifer as the president is the people in Rotary, the people who are 30, 40, 50 years old, who now can see that there is a female president because when they've been in Rotary in their journey, that wasn't a thing. But I know for Rotor Actors here in Australia and for me, um, I, I never actually realised that until I got into the NGIO because I just thought Rotary is so open, uh, this, it must be possible for anyone to do anything if they have the right values and the commitment. And so, yeah, for me, I knew it was always possible, but I think it's great for those people, maybe not here today, those Rotarians that have been around for a long time, for them to see that as possible. But yeah, it's, it's going to be incredible and it's going to help us better relate to our communities as well. Uh, when we can have a female president and say, look, yes, anyone that has the right values and has the right commitment uh, can become a leader in our organization. Uh, absolutely, I would uh, you know, continue here with what Mafalda and Samantha put in. We, of course, in South Asia, give an example of the MDIO uh, leaders that we have currently, and we do let them know that, see guys, we have women leaders coming up, leading the entire MDIO. So yes, this can be one of the strong examples for boosting the leadership, especially the female retractors coming ahead and leading the organization. And second thing, of course, in the next five years, which I positively see is more retractors who have now uh, serving, who have now already served the organization, getting into the important rotary roles here in my district. We had five district governors who have been the PDRRs. The incoming district governor is a PDRR and the district governor nominee is also a PDRR. So that really is exciting that as we grow in the numbers, as we grow in the years, we would see, uh, you know, one of us might be leading the Rotary International with the current president being the advocate of Rotrack. Similarly, how about it, a PDRR leading the entire Rotary International organization. So that would sound, uh, you know, the entire bridge between the Rotary and Rotrack collaboration and ensuring that the 
true meaning of Rotary, especially what we read in the Rotary website time and again, young people in action, that becoming a reality very soon. May I step in? But uh, I think it was very, really important what my father said. My father used one word, and I think that's important. She, she used the word uh, 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 movement. Sorry. <laughs> and you know, if you think about what is what is successful today, um, uh, not longer even in politics, not longer parties, but but movements are more and more important. Uh, uh, successful all over the world and I think Rotary is, is like a movement because we are a real grassroots organization. It's not important what what the RI president says, not important what the director or the district governor because we just can advise clubs. Everything in Rotary at least happens in clubs and with this I think we are a real grassroots organization. I think yes we are a movement because uh, it's, it starts here. And we, when we talk about Barry Rayson, and he's re a really good friend, and I, I think this great, great supporter of Rotaract. There was really a shitstorm because in Barry Rayson's board of directors, there was not a single woman. But it was not his fault. It's, it simply happened because on, of, of elections uh, all over the world, elections to district governors and then elections to directors. Uh, it's just, uh, just two years ago, not a single woman. Next year, in Sheikha Mehta's year, there will be nine women out of 19. I think this is, this is a huge step what happens here. And then one year later, of course, with uh, Jennifer Jones. And I think personally, it, it is uh, high time that we have an, uh, a female president in Rotary, as it was high time that we have the environment as an area of focus in our Rudy Foundation. And uh, I can tell you, I have uh, no problems. Many people in the world don't like to, to hear that. Uh, uh, in Europe, and my father and all these from Europe here, uh, climate change and, uh, is, is one of the major points everywhere, in every country, and uh, not just among young people. And with this, I think it was really high time that we are have done this step in, in Rotary. And this will also help thrive Rotary and, and Rotaract in the next years. We're talking about the future. Thank you. So speaking of the future of, um, in Rotaract, um, since uh, President Holger, you're here, because um, we, we have received some questions that are related to the future as well, of course. Um, so what characteristics do you think is important to be a um, to be a valuable person and um, helping out the road track movement. Um, what, what characteristics is important? I, I suppose um, definitely not about the gender, right? Uh, but what, uh, what, what is needed, do you think? Uh, yes, so I'm a great fan of diversity and you know that this becomes more, more an issue. And I'm also speaking against discrimination uh, everywhere. This, and, and this is really important for, for me personally. Uh, so I think we could really be proud that Rotary has this diversity statement, diversity, equity, and inclusion statement. And not just things happens in the United States one year ago when things also accelerated there. No, we have done that since, we have that since more than two years. And that's where we are right now. We are working to put this into action. And uh, so, and I'm really looking forward for more diversity, and not just diversity of, of, of gender, uh, diversity of age. That's, of course, important. I think that's, this has to be anyway. Uh, diversity of different professions, what makes it so, so much valuable in a Rotary no, I would love to see many, many other different people. And there are some regions in this world, they are doing this excellent. So when I'm looking into Rotary clubs and into you see so many different people, and, and in some parts of the world, it's of course also a question of, of the culture. It's different in Asia, it's again different to, to, to Australia, different in, in, in the United States, and again different in, in Europe. And I think, and so that's, that's every club again has to find its own way. But every club has also to think about that, to look for people they probably never thought about if they are looking into their communities. 
I'm, by the way, always, if people ask me who should be, become a member of a, a Rotary Club, and there are still voices in, in Germany, for example, they said, yes, we are looking just for high quality leaders. And then I'm asking back, who is defining a leader? Who do, is do, doing this? And, and as we, our clubs are becoming older and older and older, these people are also becoming older. And that's one of the obstacles we have in Rotary Clubs everywhere. If you ask me what I think is a leader, I think a leader is someone with, who feels responsibility in his profession, in his or her community. That's important. Being responsible for whatever. I think that's, for me, that's always the basis for leadership, taking responsibility, however this looks like. And uh, I think becoming a member of a Rotary Club, becoming a member of a Rotary Club, that's about taking more responsibilities. We all are growing with our office in, in with being just a member in a Rotary Club, a Rotary Club. And, I'm, of course, growing, becoming a club president and then a district governor and, and, and director. You, you start to think more. I think you've, yes, I think you're reaching different points just if you're showing leadership. And, and so, so, yes, it's about personal growth. And everybody can, okay, nearly everybody can be a leader. And that's also something, not just because he or she are already leaders, we are becoming leaders because we are in a Rotary Club, in a Rotary, uh, in a Rotary Club. For me, it's, uh, that's what I'm asking Rotary Clubs everywhere. I think look not for positions, look for opportunities with young people. And that's, that's so important. And I think one of the basic questions are, I'm always saying we want to grow, we want to thrive with more diversity, we have every opportunity to, to grow and to thrive more and better. But this is uh, sometimes some work. It depends on cultures. Let me just add another point because that's for me so important when we are talking about discrimination and, and racism. It's uh, definitely everywhere. I think you will, I'm asking you in, in all countries, but it looks everywhere different. And the reason why there is racism is also everywhere totally different. There is a reason why in North America there are these, in the United States uh, mainly, or definitely, there are reasons in the history. There are also reasons in the history in England or in France because of their history of, of, of colonialism. In my country, unfortunately, we see more problems, growing problems. There is right now another reason, because uh, in, in, in my country of so many refugees uh, here in, in the last years, uh, every country, every area, every culture had to find its own solutions for fighting racism. But of course, in all cultures, if we see it, we have to stand up and to speak against them. And in all cultures and all countries where we see a functioning democracy, it's possible for us. We all know there are countries where it's not possible to stand up for everything and being speaking with a loud voice. But in those countries where it is possible, we should really use this, this opportunity because we are allowed, we are able to, to speak against uh, whatever we we want to fight whatever is wrong. And, and let's use this opportunity and, 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 and be loud. When I think about our upcoming convention uh, next week already, so I, I was asking uh, Vanessa Nataki from, from Uganda uh, uh, to talk about uh, climate change. And uh, I'm looking forward to hear uh, many, 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 many tough uh, uh, comments from Rotarians all over the world because she is so loud and strict and, and telling us uh, uh, what the problem is and, and what she what we should do. And but I think this is what I'm expecting from youth because 
you, you should be loud and you can be loud and, and you have to be loud to be heard. And that's uh, what I love in, uh, when youth is standing up for, for problems. But again, there are so many problems in the world and uh, as Rotarians, as road workers, we really have to stand up and uh, to raise our voice. Thank you. Thank you, President Hoiga. So speak up and voice out your opinion, road tractors. Uh, thank you, President Hoiga, for your sharing. I have another question actually from the floor, which is really good. Um, the question is about in which area do you think uh, requires most collaborations between Rotary and Rotaract in order to sustain growth in the future? Now, this is especially important on the backdrop of our high target for membership growth. I recall Rotary International has a double the number of road tractors um, uh, target. Uh, and also, uh, our president-elect, uh, Shiha, uh, is aimed, um, is targeted to boost the number of Rotarians from 1.2 million to 1.3 million. So on that backdrop of high membership growth target, how shall Rotary and Rotaract collaborate? Uh, on every level. So I think uh, it, it depends where, where, it depends on people always. What, how, how can they work best together? But for me, I'm saying this very often, for me, it's always a question of mutual trust and working on eye level. So this is, this is for me, this is the basis. And if this is possible, then everything is possible. Uh, then, then for me, then there is no difference between a Rotary Club and a, and a Rotary Club because both are working for the same goals. Both, are, both, are, both club models are working for, for, yes, for the same future. So I think collaboration is possible everywhere, in projects, in, in, in planning and organizing events. And by the way, that was my, my first uh, uh, experience, not my first experience, but my, my first uh, experience, but what is still, I'm still thinking of that today, when, when Rotaractors planned my institute. And you all know, because you're experienced, Rotaractors, what an institute is. And, when I had to organize my, by the way, seven zone institute for all over Europe in Berlin. In, uh, so I'm asking Rotaractors to give me some impression to make it in a more, in a different way, more modern, more, uh, more fun, of course. And they came up with so many great ideas. So, and then I uh, sat down with my, with my uh, convener and uh, the organizer and you know what? I would love to see road directors to take the lead in the whole thing. And so the chair, or there were two chairs, one, one young man and one young uh, woman. And they both, they organized the whole seven zone leadership, uh, the uh, zone institute with uh, five different languages. And not just, not just the whole thing were organized by two road directors, or breakout sessions were also facilitated by road directors. And this works. And also the parties. So well, that makes it, you know, people are still thinking of this institute because we have really three great parties, but, but yeah, what make, makes it so memorable. I think this is one, and it's possible. So like, like the presidential conferences were organized by, by, by of course, by road directors because they were just on road rack. And if this works also. So I'm asking simply, Rotarians all over the world. It's simple. Please trust road raptors. Hey, they are, as I always say, they are no kids. They are much more energetic. They are much as experienced as many of us. And uh, simply, simply do it, and you will see it, it works. Yes, I think trust and um, collaboration is especially important given that we are now in a pandemic situation. That um, we, I think the word of the year in 2020 is, you know what, Alan, is lockdown. Mm. So I think the word that everyone is scared about, but uh, it's just something that we have to deal with it now on a daily basis. So um, for panelists, I'm, I'm interested to know how has it impacted your region and how has it impacted um, districts, clubs, and even your MDIO? Uh, for the Philippines, actually, we have done a lot in terms of digitizing the way we operate uh, in an atmosphere that all the Rotaractors in the Philippines won't feel that we are disconnected because we are staying all at home. 
So I think the only difficult thing during this pandemic is of course it's very difficult to conduct service projects uh, because that require a lot of face-to-face -face visits. But one of the things that we promoted uh, through the MDIO is partnerships. I believe if we cannot go out there, then we can partner with an NGO who has more capacity and resources and the capability to protect themselves to do the projects. And virtual fundraising, uh, these are things that became uh, very uh, prominent in our country because rotor actors are really good in uh, the digital ways of doing things. And some of the things that we also did uh, because we cannot do face-to-face -face trainings is our Filipinas Rotaract Online University uh, wherein we converted all of our usual training materials into e-learning so that all Rotaractors can just go to our platform. Uh, new or veteran Rotaractors can learn more about the organization. And one of the things that we're very proud of in the Philippines is we conducted a lot of virtual fellowship activities. I think this is something that our Rotaractors and even Rotarians miss uh, in the organization during this pandemic. The ability to connect or to enjoy the company of each other. That's why we used our creative ideas, those things that we used to do face to face like pageants, singing contests, um, name it. So all of our Rotaractors, I'm very proud of them because they were able to convert this into a virtual setting. And Rotarians actually are very much impressed on how we did it. And just to, uh, just to share also, uh, one of the good things that happened after this is more many Rotary clubs in our country started to engage Rotaractors in hosting or organizing the usual club meetings. In our club alone, because I'm also a dual member, all of our meetings during this Rota year are joined with Rotary. And there are times in once in a month wherein they ask the Rotaractors to handle the program. And they are actually very impressed on the kind of engagement activities, the kind of topics that we can inject in meetings. So I would have to agree uh, with our President Hover. It really starts with trusting our Rotaractors. And I would also like to add, uh, which uh, is also part of the Elevate Rotaract policy, is District governors are encouraged to appoint Rotaractors in district Rotary committees. Uh, in our country alone, it's already happening. In my district, I think eight Rotaractors will become members of the Rotary committees uh, by the next Rotary year. And more districts are embracing that idea. Because uh, Rotar Rotarians can really learn a lot from Rotaractors, especially in how we navigate this pandemic and continue our services. I think the pandemic is actually for, is worldwide. It must have impacted um, Rotaract and Rotary mm -hmm. communities yeah. around the world. But there are positive and negative sides to look at things. Um, shall we invite other panelists to share um, how, how it actually, you know, change your Rotaract experience and things on your uh, MDIO? Hey, Yatin. Uh, so you see, when we have, uh, as I previously mentioned during uh, one of the points, that here we have a geographical diversity, we have a lot of areas that we need to cover. Surely, pandemic has uh, given us a chance wherein we can connect with each other virtually and it becomes easier for us. Especially, I remember in one of the sessions uh, while Polgar was addressing, he was uh, so excited to tell that he has been from one country to another in a matter of just 30 minutes and changing time zones every 30 minutes. So that surely is a welcome step. And of course, the Rotary theme that we have for the current year falls in place rightly. Rotary opens opportunities. It definitely has opened the virtual gateways for people to connect all over the World. But yes, at this very same time, the pandemic, which has uh, devastated the entire world with uh, one of one or the other reasons, it also has impacted the physical events, which is, I believe, the core essence of Rotract anywhere in the world. Because Rotractors, of course, uh, apart from social service and club service, they would like to enjoy the fellowship programs and just keeping the tabs of uh, getting a cure soon about the COVID and uh, going back to the places. And we, of course, all of us might have seen that photographer Rotractor holding a play card saying, uh, stay home, I don't want to miss any more Rotract events. <laughs> so maybe all of us should ensure that as soon as we have it, the physical events are back. But until then, we need to ensure the virtual gateways are definitely the you know near site for having the events. Be it the any of the events can be conducted virtually. Yeah, as President Hoga mentioned in yesterday's opening 
memo. Mm -hmm. There's no way of going back to the old lifestyle. So um, we are connected in a way that we get to use virtual um, ways to connect with people, just like what we're doing right now. We can connect with um, road tractors from all around the world, but disconnected in another way because uh, we don't get to meet physically together. So um, what are the challenges that, that we, we face? And uh, I think you, you might have the same ideas as well, is that um, it's just hard to feel the temperature mm. um, with each other. I know it sounds a bit creepy, but then the idea is just that um, how do you still feel that you're not alone? that you get people's support, you get your community, you get friends around you? That's a very important question. So um, what I want to ask is not only about being virtual, but then what are the other measures or means that you've been using that you could share with us that are useful in a way so that we could also adapt that idea as well? Because I, I heard from some road tractors who were talking to me um, these few days that they find sometimes it's a bit depressing that um, you always have to get on Zoom or other um, means of uh, communication. Mm. But it's just feel cold because you're just watch, uh, looking and facing the camera or the screen. It's just different. Mm. Any thoughts from our panelists? Uh, I can start. Um, as you mentioned before, Europe, we, we are not in a, in a country, so we not only had the restriction of staying at home, we have border restrictions. And it's very, very hard for the members from Attract Europe to meet, uh, because legally we cannot move around. And our, most of our actions take place in, in person, and we host these three events online uh, annually that were cancelled completely. Uh, however, uh, I always thought that it, it, we should adapt. And yes, it's pandemic and we were fortunate or, or not of being leaders during this time, but we need to understand how to deal with these circumstances and to adapt to that. So I organized the events online like if they you they would take place in person. Uh, and uh, that was hard and from leadership point of view, it demands from a lot of creativity because we already have this situation where people don't want to stay at home, just look at the computer. So you need to have like this dynamic um, attraction to go and to check the events in order to, to keep uh, attracting the road tractors that normally will join in an in a offline event. So I, I think the point here is don't give up and try to flexibilize a, a lot to collect ideas as many as you want and as many as possible in order to, to keep going because eventually Yes, we will change, but we will change for a more stable reality that, where we can plan accordingly. Because right now, I think that is the main problem. We cannot plan in advance. And that is what is frustrating a lot because we don't know, but we don't know for how long we will not know. <laughs> and yes, I, I think the point here is try to be as flexible as possible. Um, I can also add, so here in Australia, we, I guess, haven't been necessarily as Im impacted as hard as other places around the world, uh, but we do also have border restrictions, so um, I can't, can't leave my state, which has impacted our ability to do our events as well. I think the most valuable thing that our members have done this year is really leaning on that connection side of things, literally picking up the phone, old school style, and calling the people in our clubs, not necessarily everyone, because we're not... I wouldn't say we're necessarily close friends with everyone in our club, but for the people that we, we do have that uh, friendship and that strength with, calling them and talking to them just like friends, like normal people, checking in, especially as leaders, checking in to make sure and see pe how people are because, as it was mentioned, a lot of people are really struggling. Um, in Australia, we have a lot of members who are international students, so 
they're in Australia and they're technically quite safe, but they're watching the devastation um, in their home countries. And so just that human connection, that checking in, I think that's something that we can always improve on, but something that um, many of our clubs have done really well and something that I would definitely recommend. Um, it's not something one person can do. One person cannot physically call uh, like 50 other people in a club or even 10 other people in a club. It definitely has to be something that if you're feeling good today, just check in with someone, someone that you do care about and see how they are. And then maybe tomorrow you'll be struggling a bit more and maybe someone will check in on you. But I think that's something that we've done well. And um, if you're not doing it, I definitely uh, yeah, suggest talking about that in your club to see if a few people could start doing that. Yeah, I'll, I'll really uh, echo Samantha's comments as well. I think it's really easy for folks to just uh, have too many virtual meetings and um, you know it's, it's hard and, and the Zoom burnout thing is real you know to be on, on Zoom calls all day especially if you're working and doing that remotely as well so I think it's really just important to make sure that you make time for connecting with uh, those people that are important to you whether it be friends uh, which might happen to be those from your Rotorac club or your family um, and just ma making sure that you keep time for those those things even uh, through all the pandemic craziness, uh, as well as you know, participating still in, in these large uh, Zoom gatherings and that sort of thing. And then if I can just add an example of something that we did here, that was it was organized by the German representatives. Actually, it was the German box. And here in Europe, we have this tradition when we are in events that uh, we organize uh, country booths where every country show their regional products and what they are hosting. So the country representatives of Germany decide to send box with products of Germany and invited 10 Rotaractors and we will receive our box in our countries and we'll all log in at the same time. So this Rotaractor from Germany, I think it was seven from seven different regions, were saying now take this product out of the box and this is how we do in Germany and how you should prepare it. So it's a way of even going through Zoom, we were connected in, in, in in a way because we were taking the same product at the same time and we we're all enjoying the the share of culture and in the dynamic and this was a really funny activity that very uh increased a lot of the spirit and the 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 people that were part really appreciate yeah yes, I, there are, there are really yes. many ways to come together virtually yeah. and, and and there are so many great examples this today this is an example what would never be happened. So without any cost, just for just uh, clicking on your notebook and being connected with all of you. I think it's easy if you know people, and, and I know so many of you in person, then it's anyway much easier to be also connected virtual. Sometimes difficult to meet very new people here. I had a couple of weeks ago a meeting with uh, Dr. Tedros from WHO, and originally it was planned a dinner. And then you can talk about this and that, but with, if you meet people the first time, it's sometimes it's, uh, it's then difficult because you are always official, you can't talk about not important thing, and that makes it for me difficult, uh, meeting uh, new people the first time. Uh, but So my, my request to all is let's keep all the good things. Uh, of course, we can't wait to meet in person, to hug people, to have a beer together, and, and to have fun together. But uh, I think this is, there's so much value in meetings like this year, and we can, can do that whenever we want. For older people, I think it's, it's much easier to be in a lockdown. <clears throat> so <clears throat> for Suzanne and I, we are living here like, at home like always. Of course, I would love to travel the world as a president. And as I'm saying very often, I'm definitely the first our president has never been in his office or working in his office. <laughs> Uh, but, but that's okay. I think with this year I'm meeting n no president before me uh, was able to meet so many Rotarians and Rotaractors worldwide, worldwide day by day. Uh, and so for older people like me, you know what, it's, it's okay. So I'm really, when I'm talking with younger people, sometimes younger than you, this time is just once in a lifetime when you are growing, when you have to look, when you are graduated, when you are looking for jobs. 
that is the, that's much more difficult to do it virtually. If you're in an age where you're looking for a partner, that's nearly impossible, just virtual, of course. So, and, and this time, yeah, you can, this is just once in a lifetime. These two years are really gone. And so I really feel sorrow for, for, for many young people here because that's, that's so, so different. Their, their steps in their, their life is so different to my life. Youth exchange is an example. Those who are for two years not able to go in youth exchange, they are starting with their studies. So for, for most of them, there is no way uh, uh, to do it uh, uh, a year after or whatever. So, that, so this, is, this is really tough for these age groups. For me, yes, it's a pity not to travel, but uh, we are living at home like, like always. And so that's, uh, that's a difference. By the way, there's one other point. I'm, I'm always also talking to Rotarians. There are many world directors and Rotarians in these difficult times, and economic different, difficult times, are struggling with their jobs, are struggling with their businesses. And this is also where Rotary can help. This was one of the reasons when Rotary was founded by Paul Harris for also taking care of each other. And also Rotarians can, can help Rotaractors when they are looking for jobs. And Rotaracts can help each other uh, uh, to, to, to not to be alone, that's, that's of course, but also really uh, uh, in tough situations to survive this, uh, this pandemic. And that's what I'm also asking all Rotaractors, all Rotarians, Look, also, let's look after each other here uh, to help to survive this uh, this crisis. Definitely, in these um, difficult times, I think it's um, it's better that we we could um, hold out our hand. Mm -hmm. um, what should we do? We could form a virtual circle around the world, uh, pat each other at the back, and to tell them to keep up with the good work, take care of yourself before you can be valuable to your community and serve people. So I think it's very important um, that the world needs Rotaractors. So let's bring up uh, some questions that we have and um, to see if um, our audience have questions for President Hoiger and um, the panelists. Sure. So for those who are joining us on Zoom, just a kind reminder that if you would like to raise a question to our panelists or our President Holger, you can actually um, uh, put that on the chat box and our team will pick that up for you. So here I have a great question. So we were just talking about road tractors and the world. Um, well, even under the pandemic, we are trying to make a difference and we are trying to, you know, like care, love and share with each other. So um, the question is about any innovative ideas in putting into practice the DEI, which stands for Diversity, Equality, and Inclusion Statement of Rotary International. So that is definitely one of the key focus of our modern world, um, how Rotary or Rotaractors um, can respond to that, the diversity, equality, and inclusion. Would President Ho uh, Hoike would like to start first, um, followed by our panelists' response? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great question. That's a question I have no answer to. Because this is, this is, because it's so different. It's different in Japan. If you're asking for, for DI D in, in, in Japan, it's, you will get a different answer. In India, you will get, a, again, a different answer. So there is no, no uh, uh, unified message to, to all cultures, to all countries. I think this has been found in every region, club by club, to look for the people to look for different people, to look for more diversity in clubs, to look for people we never think about and ask them to join, to join our, our Rotary Club. And, uh, and as I always say, and I still say that, of course, they have, there has to be a good fit to the Rotary Club and World Rock Club. I think that's also important because we want them as, as, as members, as friends, and not just looking looking to us and then leaving the club. So, especially in, in Rotary, I really would love to see members as friends, and that's important. That 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 it, it fits. It, it, it's it's about being recognized as a member. So uh, we we have to make sure not just inviting people. We have to make sure that there's we value every member 
in our club. Road right or rotary. I think that's that's always the basic. thing. If we don't value people in our clubs, then we are definitely on the wrong track. And by the way, I learned here in in one of our newspaper a great explanation of uh, what is diversity and what is inclusion. And uh, I so it's, I don't know who who said that, but it's 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 a quote. It's not my idea. Uh, the difference is uh, diversity is being invited or invite someone to a party. Inclusion is asking him or her to dance with you. That's a difference. And that's also, that's the difference between diversity and inclusion. Embrace people. So, feeling them, them a value part of your club. I think that's the first step. And that's, that's, that's what is behind all these, this question of, of equality, diversity and yeah, for our case in uh, in our country, I think uh, we're very much uh, okay in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusion. I I, I believe that our membership in Rotaract is very diverse, and I think it really starts on the Rotaract clubs. Uh, having really that culture in your club that if you discount the differences in terms of uh, religion, of uh, gender, and all kinds of differences, if he or she is a good fit for your club, then you should operate in a way that those differences will not be uh, discriminated or highlighted against uh, any person in the club. Second is I think uh, Rotaract and even Rotary Clubs are always active in social media. We are actually promoting that we are people of action. And one of the things that some community members think about Rotary and Rotaract is that it's just an organization for the elite or for the highly successful people. So if we start on communicating, on humanizing that Rotaractors and Rotarians are actually ordinary people having extraordinary experiences in the organization, then more people can relate to us and eventually we can attract more members. And that's our principle behind our social media and even our launching of the Philippine Rotaract magazine. We want to position Rotaract and Rotary out there that we are just any organization that you are welcome to join. And these are the simple lives of our members. If you think you are inspired or if you want to share your own story, then probably you can join us. So it's really very important that our campaign out there is really uh, reflective of the diversity, equity, and inclusion that we want to position in the organization. Thank you, Louis. Any other response from our panelists on the topic of diversity, equality, and inclusion? Something that uh, we're kind of doing in Australia is identifying which parts of our community are not as well represented in our clubs. And I, I guess from what I can see, we don't represent the multiculturalism that is Australia very well in our clubs. So I think it is important to identify, as much as we can use these words, identify actually what is missing from your clubs. Do your clubs reflect your community? Um, do your district leadership teams reflect your community? And I know that's an area we can improve upon. Uh, something that one club has done here in Australia is um, work on a reconciliation action plan with an Indigenous group in their local area because we don't have uh, many Indigenous members in our Rotaract clubs. So that, that is something that this particular club has done in their area to kind of partnering with an Indigenous, indigenous organisation to see how they can work together in the community to, to help that group of people because without having that group of people, without having that perspective in the Rotaract Club, they can't, they can't make a proper decision on how they can help that group. So um, that's, a, I guess, a practical example of something that has been done. Um, also, some other clubs are very multicultural, which is wonderful. And they're definitely the clubs that are more successful. They, they have more engagement. They are able to better help in their community and better identify their community's needs because they have that varied perspective. And I think uh, they won a lot of awards at our recent um, Rotaract Australia Awards Night, this particular club. And I think now we've all, all the clubs that maybe are not as uh, multicultural as they should be, uh, they've seen the, the real value of that. And I hope going forwards, we'll start partnering with, with different organizations that are quite multicultural, because I think that that is a weakness of, of our clubs in Australia. 
Thank you, Samantha. That's a very creative and good initiative of reaching out to the community and picking up the missing spots uh, or representation of the community. That's definitely something that we can take away. Um, actually, I have another question here, uh, um, uh, which is from the floor, uh, before we move on to the closing remarks. Um, so, well, this is a good question from a road tractor who may be our future leader. Because he's asking, what is the biggest difference between operating a district and an MDIO? So maybe he's a DRR or PDR who would like to step up in a leadership role in MDIO. And may I extend a question to President Hoyke as well? Uh, what's the biggest difference between operating a district as a governor, a zone as a director, and a president of Rotary International? These are definitely different leadership levels. Would anyone... <laughs> Yeah, that's a tough question. I've no, I've really no idea. At least you're, I think you're you're finding them yourself uh, in a new position, becoming a district governor. Of, when I remember that, uh, of course you're excited. You're in a new position. You try, of course, to do the very best you can uh, to do what people expected and to thrive the organization. Uh, the next step. Is, is, is a director, and it, I think it's the same thing, because you are growing with the, with reaching different levels. It's like from 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 being an ordinary ordinary member of your club, and then becoming a club president. That's something uh, uh, you're exciting. Uh, you're it, it, and you try to do the very best what you can, of course, and uh, you are growing with this step by step. And I think so. At least the the personal experience. It's, 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 I think it's the same because everything is new, uh, the position is new, you have to look at how to manage everything and uh, uh, being a director you are, of, you, you are for two years on the board and then yes probably the next step is the president for some, not for all but for some and, and with this you, are, you know what you're expecting uh, and you are exciting and uh, I think personally Yes, I think you are feeling, you are finding yourself in another position and uh, uh, I think it's always work and that's, uh, and that's, that's okay. It's, for me, it's not just being important and hey, you are now president of Rotary International and, uh, and uh, so I hope I'm, I'm the same person than always, uh, uh, regardless of the, the, the level of your, of your office, what you are doing right now, because that's not important. And by the way, the, the beauty of, of Rotary offices is whatever office you have or have, at least uh, you are always a member of your Rotary Club. That's the most important thing. When I'm leaving office, okay, presidents normally become tr uh, trustees of the Rotary Foundation. But after that, there are no more, more offices and you are back in your Rotary Club and then you are uh, among your, your friends. I think that's important. And by the way, when you are becoming older, at the very end uh, of your life, you can be happy being in a Rotary Club among friends. And so that's, I think that's the important thing. Becoming a governor or director or president, just, just uh, it's a small part of your life. And uh, as I said, everybody tries. And you, as MDIOs are, and, and, and are, our uh, 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 rep uh, district representatives, everybody is doing whatever he or she can do uh, to make the best out of this time. Thank you, President Hoga. So no matter we are a mem no matter at what level of uh, leadership, remember that we are a member of Rotary Club or Rotary Club. How about our uh, regional leaders? I, I believe all of you have been district Rotary representatives before. How is that different for leading an MDIO in a district? Okay, I can probably start because I I became a DRR, then I became a national MDIO officer. I think the difference really is on the experience that uh, we want uh, to to provide to our members. I would like to pick up from the point of Hoger that Rotary is really a grassroots organization. All of the action in our organization are really being done by the clubs. But we have to understand that clubs have different maturity levels. There are uh, very uh, old Rotary or Rotary clubs and there are new clubs. 
So the district's role is really on guiding uh, these clubs in order to attain a certain maturity level. They are an important resource and that's a uh, resources. So that's the important role of a district Rotaract representative to make sure that fundamentally what Rotaract clubs in his or her district needs to know and needs to experience, it is being provided. Now, when you go up to an MDIO, let's say a national MDIO, your focus now is on the districts. Because uh, not all districts also have the same maturity level. And what's good when we have multi-district platforms, we can get the best from one district. I mean, we can get the best of both of all the kinds of uh, experiences of all districts and package that into training programs, multi-district fellowship activities, and even service projects. Because there are projects that are more impactful when we do it as a group. Let's say uh, as a group of multiple districts. So there, that's where MDIOs come from, and that's how a leadership of an MDIO leader would look like. Now also, uh, since we're uh, different MDIOs here, we also have to understand that there are national MDIOs like that of us, Samantha, uh, and yeah, us in the Philippines. But there's also regional MDIOs like that of uh, Mafalda and Yatin. And what's good also about regional MDIOs is we can get the most of the best of different countries in the MDIO. So I really think that as you go up in the organization, you also level up the experience that you can provide to the member. And that makes us, our organization, really an international or multicultural organization because we have these structures in place. Thank you, Louis. Um, good to hear from Louis. Any other um, sharing from our regional leaders? Uh, yeah, I guess if I was to summarize the biggest difference, it's remembering who you represent when you are, are invited to have a seat at a table. So I'm here today representing Rotaract Australia and although we're called Rotaract Australia, we also actually have Timor Leste, Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands and Nauru in our MDIO. So when I do represent Rotaract Australia at, at a committee meeting or something like that, just remembering that I represent all of the people, whereas when I was a district Rotaract representative, the people I represented, the interests were slightly different, their challenges were slightly different, um, and so what I would share or the information I would seek from them would also be slightly different. So that would be my advice if you are a district representative or you want to become an MDIO representative or a leader, uh, just when you do have these opportunities to share your or share your organization's voice at a table, just make sure that you remember who you're representing at that time because it does change when you take on the different roles. Thank you, Samantha. Um, any words from Joey or Nevada? Uh, I think Samantha and Louis did a very good job uh, on the job description, what is expected from us. Uh, and the point is, you need to be the reflection of your members. So you you need to 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 be the example, and you need to lead by example. Uh, and it's very different when we are speaking as national, continental, district uh, level, because the expectations that people have from you are different. Uh, so the point here is, you need to to inform yourself what is your target and to, to build what is expected from you from the people that you are representing at that moment. And there is no formula that you can put there and it's always the same. No, you need to adapt and see what is necessary for that target in specific at that moment of time. Thank you, Mavada. So I think uh, we, we've, we managed to pick up a few points, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope it helps with you in attending the um, Asia Pacific Road Track MDIO in the future. Mm -hmm. So um, I also wish to thank uh, the panelists for your sharing. And uh, audience, I think, I hope you could pick up a few points as well. So um, if there are um, the panelists, if you have any last remarks for us, then it would, that would be great. Mm -hmm. So maybe we could start with Joey. Do you have any last remarks for us? And then sure. um, we could go, go around the panelists and then uh, back to President Heuger. Mm, sure. 
Sure. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much uh, for for having me and for it's been a great uh, experience to be with you all today. I'm excited to see what the rest of the event brings. And there's quite a lot of rotary excitement coming in the, in the next few weeks. This event and, and several others. So um, I hope to see many of you uh, a lot over the next few weeks. Thank you, um, Louis. Yeah, I think I, I actually loved really the theme this year, which is Rotary Opens Opportunities and with the visualization of a door. Even though we end this, uh, I mean, in the organization, there are a lot of opportunities, but the success really of your experience in Rotary or in Rotary relies on how you maximize these opportunities. If you really want to get the best out of Rotary or Rotary, then maximize, get these opportunities, and even offer these opportunities to your fellow members so that we can um, make, we can package, we can highlight the value of being part of this organization. Thank you. Uh, Mafalda? Uh, thank you so much for, for having us here. And I think that we should be very thankful for having this opportunity to talk with your directors, to to know, to, to have the opportunity to meet so many people and not even being uh, present, like physical present at the, at the event, but having the opportunity of being part of the event on, uh, online with all of these that we have been working together all of the, the year, but I always find something new and I always learn something when I'm talking with Amanda and Yadin and Luis and Joey and Holger, so it's always a pleasure for me to join these meetings. Thank you. And Samantha? Yes, thank you so much for the invitation to be part of this panel. Uh, and it is an incredible weekend that you have planned, uh, even if it's not what you had originally planned. And exactly what Mafalda said, every time I come to one of these things, whether I'm a panellist or an attendee, I always learn so much. So thank you everyone else for, for sharing all your ideas and all the things that are happening in your countries and in your regions, because it's always such an incredible opportunity to learn. Thank you. And Yatin, do you have any last um, conclusion and remarks for us? Uh, first of all, thank you, Stephen and Alan, for being such sweet hosts and ensuring everything was in place. And secondly, thank you for pulling up the event virtually because this would go down as a good example for all the Rotractors that, yes, if inter -rota can happen virtually, their club events, their district events can surely go on the virtual wire and especially ensuring this safety around the community. And for all the Rotractors present over here, be thankful for the virtual events that we have, uh, RI President joining in and my fellow batchmates joining in early morning, evening in their time zones. Do find a reason for yourself, guys, to uh, be in Rotary, to be in Rotaract, because that is only something would ensure that, yes, whatever good work you are doing, it will keep going on and ensure the incoming Rotaractors, the new faces of Rotary, Rotaract, and the Interact would know that, yes, we need to have a reason to be in this organization. Thank you, Yatin. Um, it's not just about me, but it's about the whole team that everyone has put in a lot of effort to make this happen. So, uh, President Hoiger, uh, we, for Interota, it's once in every three years, but four years for this time. Um, we hope that um, this is a great opportunity for all the road actors around the world to, um, to meet up, uh, hopefully in Hong Kong, but unfortunately not this time. Um, do you have any last remarks for us in this session? Yes, I, could, uh, have, I have ideas for speaking another hour here with you. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, this last remark, that's always an opportunity to say thank you, uh, of course, to the organizers to, to put so much work, too much effort in making this uh, possible here, but also to all participants, uh, especially to those who are normally in bed at this time here, uh, like me. So thank you for being part of this discussion here. But uh, again, I, I really would like to ask all of you uh, to make some promotion for, for meetings like this here, because this is, an, I think if this is our opportunity to travel the world and uh, also for, for all Rotaractors to make connections, not just in their own, own Rotaract club, but to look beyond the club. And uh, virtual meetings, I think it's an, it, for me, it's a wonderful and great opportunity to travel the world totally inexpensive to make friends. And uh, I think there are today so many new initiatives 
of friendship exchanges between Rotaractors, between Rotarians, and let's let's keep that and let's uh, develop that because this is can be really a totally different step uh, to yes to make connections all over the world and probably when we are able to travel and uh, uh, to events or uh, even visit uh, people personal uh, on a private basis. I think let's keep these things. It's for me. It's it's a great opportunity, and I'm using it daily, of course, right now. But also in the future, I, I'm sure I will meet many friends uh, 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 virtually. And so I'm asking you keep that. Please, even if I'm not a president, invite me because I'm I'm seeing so many so many friends here. I met several times on so many different occasions uh, and. Uh, I personally believe that also Zoom brings something like a new closeness between people, and this is also helping pe people all over the world. My last comment is uh, again something I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about discrimination, you all know that, but I'm also concerned about today's, especially among young and old people, this is this growing emphasis on individualism. Everybody is just looking selfish for him or herself. And this is something we really should also to speak against. And here comes our everlasting theme uh, into play. Uh, individualism, that's not a solution for our future. It's really about serving, serving the common good. And even if I love my theme, Road Reopens Opportunities, serving a common good, that's about really about service above self. And uh, so that's, that's, I think that's more important than ever, especially in difficult times uh, like today, serving the common good. I think that makes people happy. Uh, you and I are really happy if we are, can help others and uh, see that other people become happy and, and, and more joy. So thank you for all of you. Uh, I can tell you what I'm doing right now. I'm going, it's six o'clock. It's still time to go to bed. It's Sunday. And uh, next week will be a tough week. And I'm encourage you, join, please join the uh, Rotaract pre-convention. Uh, join the convention. Uh, some people are complaining that it uh, costs money. Some complaining it's too much money. You can join it together with friends. So we have many initiatives here in my country where Rotary Clubs sitting together, or groups of friends sitting together and uh, joining uh, these sessions, uh, not alone. It's never ever interesting doing things alone, but being together with a group of friends of 10 people, if it's allowed in your country, I don't know that right now because <laughs> of, the, of the lockdown, but come together and look the convention together. I think that's... Uh, I think it's good. There are really some, some great opportunities and great ideas here. So again, thank you and uh, enjoy the rest of the Interrota. Thank you. Thank you, President Holger. So before we go to the um, photo taking session, um, there is a, something I'd like to share and to promote as well, because uh, once we had a past um, DRR, who once usually always does at the end of the different events, is to share some um, song lyrics. Uh, for me, I just want to share the road track song. In the lyrics, there, there are two lines that I'd like to share is, come join the world of road track, hand in hand, across the land. You and me, let's work for what the world should be. So uh, I would just like to say the future of road track is in everyone's hands. Um, so please stay safe. Take care uh, before we could meet again in the future. So um, again, also to promotion, if you want to take a look at the song lyrics of this road track song, just Google road track song and then maybe type D3450, then you could find the whole song or you can listen in, um, throughout the whole interrota. Yeah, yeah that's you. the opening song every section for our intro as well. So um, thank you very much for everyone joining us this wonderful morning. Thank you, President Hoga. Thank you, our panelists from all around the world. Thank you, everyone joining us on Zoom. And also thank you, P.B. Steven, who is the moderator for this section. Thank you. So before we close the section, since we have everyone here, let's have a group photo. Please turn on your camera on Zoom, and in the next minute, you will watch a video about Hong Kong. And find, after that, the camera will be ready, 
And now, see you in one minute. Get your camera ready. Hold your smile. Okay, the photo taking is done. Thank you, everyone. You can keep your camera on. So the Rotary Opens Opportunities Forum will continue in next uh, in ten minutes at twelve fifteen Hong Kong time. We will have the second part of the forum with the film Let's Be Future Ready. Please join the Zoom meeting via the link provided in the chat box right now, or refer to that on your registration email. If you unfortunately cannot join us for the second part of the forum, we look forward to seeing you again in other programs of Interrota later today, including cultural workshops starting at 6 p.m. Hong Kong time, or Interrota Academy: What the World Should Be, starting at 9 p.m. Hong Kong time. Please refer to our program schedule for more details. I also suggest you to follow our Facebook Interrota 2020 Hong Kong and our Instagram Interrota 2020. Underscore Hong Kong for more details. Check out our stories, and you may see yourself on it. One more thing: during your free time, I would recommend you to visit Gather Doc Tang, our Interota virtual meetup platform. It is an alternative platform for participants to meet new friends and interact with each other. Although we cannot meet each other in person, you can meet in the virtual world. You can simply walk in and out of the Rotary rooms, fun game rooms, and culture rooms on the platform. You may enjoy gaming together. Video chatting and free discussion with other Interota registrants. You may also see President Hoga there. I shall see you there later as well. So right now, please enjoy the break and see you later on. See you at 12:15 p.m. Hong Kong time. See you. <laughs>